All righty. Hey guys, welcome to our call. It is November 27th, Cyber Monday. So I'm really happy that you guys are here and not shopping online. You can do that after. I'm sure you've done a lot of shopping today. I already did some too, but I'm really happy to see you guys here. And we have a really great guest speaker tonight who I'm super excited to hear from. But before we get into that, I want to hand it over to Christy to do our recognition and then I will introduce Ashley and we can get started. So whenever you're ready. Can you see that? Yes, cool. Okay, so I am going to start with the life changers. Um, with two, we have Haley Alt Altizer, Michelle North, John Boyd, Christy Kako, I actually have four, um, Caroline O'Neill, Judy Ann Ridley, Megan Scott, Lauren Kinker, Sarah Jennings, Kelsey Crookshanks, Kyleen Spensley, Alicia Condal, and Brandy Erickson. With three, we have Alicia Hendelson. With four, we have Brittany Swanson, Carolyn Walker, Brandon Kecko, Carissa Van Dever, and Victoria Godber. With five, we have Katie Petrillo and Cody Clark. With six, we have Taylor Gross and Brittany Long. With seven, we have Jennifer Blythe and Corey Mueller. With eight, we have Colby Rubino, Natalie Balsamo, and Lauren Avon. And with 11, we have Emmy Schneider Green. And then with 19, we have Carolyn, which brings our success club total to 136, which means we've changed 68 lives so far. We still have three solid days left of this month, in addition to four extra hours for today. So if you aren't there yet, even if you have zero, you still have time. I've pulled it off in one day before. It's not impossible. Um, I've gone from two to 10 in one day before. It's not impossible. You guys still have plenty of time. So going over to recruiters, with one, we have Victoria Godber, Taylor Gross, Natalie Balsamo, Lindsay Dressing, Kelsey Crookshanks, Carissa Van Dever, Jennifer Blight, Haley Altizer, Colby Robino, Brandy Erickson, and Alicia Condal. With two, we have Katie Petrillo, Carolyn Marone, Brittany Long. With three, we have Lauren Avon, Emmy Schneider Green, and Corey Mueller. And with 10, we have myself. And that is all. Go team. Go team. <laughs> that was cute. All right, guys, you are rocking it. Thank you, Christy, for doing that. Um, so I'm going to introduce our guest speaker today. And Ashley and I had the opportunity to connect on a mastermind call, which is where a couple coaches get together. We brainstorm ideas. We share our best practices and things that we're doing with our teams that are working. And Ashley is doing amazing things with her business and her team is doing amazing things with her. So I'm really excited to have her here with us today. She's a five-star qualifying coach in her first business center, which means that she's in the running to be an elite coach and they will be an elite team. I have full confidence in that. She's also one star qualifying in her second CBC and her team is currently ranked number 14 in the network out of 450,000 teams. So that's amazing in itself. If I just told you that one thing, that would be enough right there, but I'm going to pass it over to Ashley to introduce herself a little bit more, tell you a little bit about her and dive into her topic. So whenever you're ready, girl, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Um, so it's such an honor to be here because you guys are a rock star team. And I'm always like, uh, I never feel like worthy enough to be presenting on other calls. But um, the one thing that I do really, really, really well is recruit coaches. And so I'm going to share with you everything that I do um, and kind of my progression this year. So the, the beginning of the year in January, rank wise, I was maybe in like I don't know. I was in the top 100, which I don't even know how that happened. But now over the course of the year, I've gotten increasingly closer to top 10 just from recruiting so many coaches and then helping them to start 
and to bring on volume and to hit success clubs. So I'm going to share with you what I do, how I get those coaches, um, and what I'm doing now because I am tweaking a little bit based on the time of the year. In January, I will be a coach for three years. That will be my coach anniversary. Um, and for the first year, I really kind of like dabbled mostly in it. I was like, I, I considered myself to be a business builder, but I didn't really take the action I needed to take. And then in my second year, I was like, I gotta make this work. And then I was able to quit. And then this year has just exploded and been very, very successful. Beachbody Corporate did tell me that I have increased my income by 300% since last year. And that is the number sixth in, they ranked people who have increased their income since last year. And I'm number six on that list. So what I'm doing is working. So hopefully you will get something out of this. So I'm going to share my screen. And then I can also share this presentation with you when I'm done. Oops, sorry. Okay, can you all see that? Okay. So first thing I wanna do is I want, I was like starting off with a little assessment. So do you consider yourself to be a strong and consistent recruiter? So on this spectrum, where are you? So four is like, you're adding five or more dream team coaches every month. And one is like, you've never recruited a coach. And in between is you're inconsistent or you add people, but they're not really your ideal coaches. So just take a moment to think about where you are. And I wanna tell you that one or more or all of these things are what is holding you back. So as I go through these, again, kind of rate yourself four, strongly agree, and one, strongly disagree. You don't believe in the coaching opportunity strongly enough, and so you don't feel like you want to share it. You feel kind of icky or salesy sharing it. You're not proud enough of the coaching opportunity. Number two is you don't believe in yourself enough. You're like, if I recruit coaches, then I have to like teach them and I have to be a leader and I don't know enough yet. Number three is you don't know who you want to attract. You're just like, I will take anyone and everyone. So I'm just going to be super general and vague in the hopes that like somebody wants to be a coach. And then number four is you simply don't take enough action. So I'm going to go through each of these four things and share <clears throat> exactly what I do. So number one is you have to believe in the coaching opportunity. So what do you think of when you hear the word recruitment? Because I hear this a lot. Coaches will say, I don't like to use the word recruitment because it sounds salesy or icky. I'd rather say grow my team or expand my tribe. And I'm like, that's just bullshit. Like you have to remember, excuse me, I like to swear. Um, you have to remember that like when it comes down to it, we are in sales. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Grant Cardone a lot tonight, and he's like my, my Jesus. I listen to him all day, every day. So right now I'm listening to um, Sell or Be Sold, which is one of his newer books. And he said like, oh, you don't want to sound salesy. You're in sales. At some point you have to come off as salesy. But when I think of the word recruitment, I think of high school athletes being recruited by colleges and given scholarships that are going to change their whole freaking life. I think of college or um, sorority recruitment when a group of girls is like, hey, we like you. We want you to kind of hang out with us. That's an honor. And then I think of job recruitment. So my husband is in IT and every single day he gets at least two emails from job recruiter, cr excuse me, recruiter saying, hey, Sean, we saw your profile on LinkedIn. You have this amazing skill set. We think you'd be a really great fit for this job. And here's why. And he's not turned off by those emails. He's not like, oh, another salesy email. He's like, damn straight, I'm good. Like, yeah, keep these emails coming. And yeah, this looks like a good job. So I think of recruitment in those terms. It's something that can change someone's life. It's an honor. It's a privilege. And I go into inviting and posting about the coaching opportunity with that mindset. So if you have the mindset of, oh, I don't like recruiting, then that's your block. That's why you're not recruiting anyone. But if you go into it with, this is a gift, and I'm going to give you this gift and honor, then your world is going to change. So um, you have to be constantly sharing what coaching has done for you. 
And if you are new or you haven't had much success yet, you have to look at those who've gone before you. You have to have that belief. So when I started and I wasn't making much, you know, I'd get like a $14 paycheck. It was I'm like, oh, I'm rolling in the dough. But I would look at Lindsay Matway and I would look at Melanie Metro and Amy Silverman and be like, damn, if they can do it, why can't I? And I never, ever doubted the coaching opportunity. So let me move on to the next one. Okay. Um, so I never doubted it. And I just believed that if they could do it, I could do it too. And I always tell my coaches, these are the three things that I share and that you should be constantly sharing. Um, the first one is the physical successes. So what do you gain by being a coach? Does this keep you on track? Does this keep you accountable? I always sell it as, would you like to get paid to work out at home? drink smoothies and share recipes with friends. Like how freaking awesome is that? Why would you not want to do that? I always share that I hate fitness, but this job makes me work out every day. And that's why I've lost all my weight. And I've had such an incredible transformation. This is that deeper why it's that deeper level than, Oh, I just want to look at an bathing suit in the summer. It keeps me on track all year. The emotional successes. Have you found your best friends? Do you feel like you actually have a passion and a purpose? So I was a former teacher and I always talk about how like I would bust my ass as a teacher and like nobody would ever come up to me and be like that lesson just changed my life. But every single day I wake up to messages from women saying like, oh my gosh, I lost five pounds. You've changed my life. So it's that. So think of the emotional component. And then what are you gaining through personal development, through the community that you have here? A lot of women who join me don't even need the money. They're just like, I want the community that you have to offer. And then lastly is the financial success. And you have to share every little victory. So when I was a new coach and I earned that $14, I shared that, hey, it allowed me to buy this really fancy jar of almond butter that I really wanted at the grocery store. And I would otherwise not buy because it's ridiculous to spend $14 on a jar of almond butter. But now thanks to this side, income, I can afford to buy this jar of almond butter. It was Father's Day and I'm like, I got to buy all my Father's Day gifts with my coaching income. I got to pay my car payment this month with my coaching income. And now I'm able to say like, I quit my job and you know, obviously things are a lot better, but you want to share those small successes. Those are more relatable to people than being like, oh, I quit my job and I'm a six figure earner. No, they just want to be able to buy their kid new shoes. Or like when I was pregnant, I said like, I bought this fancy, ridiculous stroller and people are like, you're ridiculous for buying that. And I'm like, I paid in cash thanks to my coaching gig. Right. And that really was intriguing to other expecting moms. So share those small financial successes. And share your vision. So if you haven't even made a dollar yet, you can share what your goals are. And I did this a lot at the beginning in private messages, especially, I would say my goal is to quit my job this year and do this coaching gig full time. I think you'd be really interested. I would love for you to check it out. Or I would say, I am going to replace my income this year, and I thought you might be interested in doing it with me. So in private messages, I would share that vision and that goal. I didn't I didn't publicly post that because like a lot of my coworkers and boss followed me. So I had to keep that hush hush, but privately I sold the vision. So a lot of coaches will say like, I work a full-time job. How am I supposed to sell? You know, like, Oh, come join and join me and work another full-time job. Well, what is your vision? Why are you doing this? You have to sell them on that vision on that long-term goal. So number two, so that's number one, you have to believe in the coaching opportunity, what it can do for you and what it can do for other people. So if you do not have a strong belief in that, then you're probably slacking. So number two is you have to believe in yourself. And a lot of people say like, oh, I don't want to recruit people. I'm not ready. And I always say, this is a build the plane as you fly it kind of gig. You have to learn by doing, not by reading. If you want to be a better coach yourself, then you will recruit coaches because then you're forced to step up your game and lead from the front. Um, I always tell my coaches, like, if you aren't happy with your success club numbers, you need to recruit more coaches because then you have to show up for them. I always make sure that I'm leading the pack in success club points and coach recruitments on my team. And I'm always sharing my numbers with them. Like you guys did. And I'm always saying like, I challenge you to get close to me. Who can try to get as many success club points as me or help as many we say life changers as well. Like how many people, how many people can you help? Can you get close to me? So that just really, really causes you to step up your game. Um, and you have to break your limiting beliefs. I know for a while I was like, I could never handle that many coaches. Um, 
But then I went to the new leader conference and I heard a few of the top coaches talk and it was really, I can do it. I just had to change my systems. So if you're telling yourself, I could never recruit that many coaches, I could never keep track of them. You can, you just have to adapt and you have to change what you're doing now to account for more volume, more people. So Grant Cardone, as I said, is one of my favorites. Um, so you have to do personal development. This one isn't really about like confidence or belief, but it is one that got me so fired up. I read this in December of last year, and I think that's a telling sign because that's when my business blew up. Blew up. Um, and I share this with my team. December is really like October, November, December last year, the fourth quarter is when I like hit it so hard. I was offering multiple free groups a month. I was offering so much value on social media. I was connecting with so many people. And in December is when I decided to quit my job. And on December 23rd, I quit my job and I had 10 success club points that day. And I was like, oh shit, like, what am I doing? Like, is this going to be enough to like pay off my, you know, for us to live on. And I just hustled and all of that work that I had put in in November and December paid off. And I got like 58 success club points in the last week of December. And then ever since then, every month I've gotten like 70 to a hundred success club points. So if you are just like super consistent, um, and you know, Grant Cardone, as I said, I read this and I'm like, damn straight, I'm going all in. And so anytime I'm doubting myself, I listen to his audiobooks. So if you don't know him, you have to get him. Um, and then you have to know who you want to attract. So for the first two years I was a coach, I was just like, I just want to take anybody. If somebody like looks at me, I'm like, oh my gosh, they could be my coach. Even if they are like the complete polar opposite of who I want. I was like, I will take any warm body who will join my team. But eventually I was like, no, I have to be specific. I have to speak to a specific person because you have to be you. When you try to reach everyone, you actually speak to no one. So be you, be authentic, and don't get up, get caught up in the shoulds of who you should be as a coach, right? So at the beginning, I acted like I loved exercise, and I just came off as really fake. I look back at those beginning posts, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I ever got anybody to join me with those. Um, but now I'm just super transparent about the fact that I hate exercise, but I treat it as a discipline. I don't like salad, but I eat it every day and I hate it. Um, and I attract a lot of people who are just like me who are like, okay, yes, like I can do this. I don't have to be this like super fit freak. And, but if that's your, your thing, then you have to lead with that. Don't try to be someone else because then nobody's going to want to connect with you. Um, your social media is your storefront. So a lot of coaches will tell me, I don't want to post too much about coaching and like annoy my followers or get unfollowed. And I'm like, okay, so imagine you opened a coffee shop in your neighborhood. Would you be like, I don't want to annoy my neighbor. So I'm not going to open my coffee shop every day. No, you would open that coffee shop. You would have signs everywhere. You would be like busting in people to try your coffee and then asking them to go tell their friends and their parents and their aunts and uncles to come try your coffee. The same is true with your business. Your social media is your storefront and you have to be putting up those help wanted signs. You have to be opening your doors and letting people know what it is you do and that you can, that they can do this too. But you have to create curiosity, not resistance. I never, ever, ever mention the word beach body. I never mentioned Shakeology. I never mentioned Beachbody on Demand. I never mentioned anything like that. And most people tell me, I didn't even know you like were, you worked for someone. Like I didn't even know you were a part of Beachbody. And I think that's a great honor. And then when I explain what I do, they're like, oh, okay, I can do this because I'm not coming off as of salesy. And then my followers, when I actually, ask them to be coaches they don't they they've seen what I do so then they're not like oh, okay well she wasn't salesy so she's gonna teach me how to not be salesy and annoying so I can do this too um, but remember that you get what you post for so if you want hard-working coaches you have to show that you're a hard-working coach you can't write this off as like oh this is so fun and easy who just wants to earn free money so I'm always sharing how I'm waking up early I'm staying up late I'm pulling all-nighters because I want to attract hard-working people so you have to remember that's what you get can't see my, my mouse. I'm just like clicking anywhere. Um, okay. So if you haven't created your avatar, you have to create your avatar. This is mine, Taylor. And my middle name is Taylor. And what's really creepy is I created her last October. 
And I started to then attract a lot of people with the name Taylor, which is super creepy. And then one of my coaches who was actually talking to right before I got on this call, her name is Ashley Taylor, my exact name. And we have the same birthday. How creepy is that? Um, so if you haven't done this, you have to create your avatar. Every time I post, I think of Taylor and I only speak to her. And this has really, really helped. It's kind of creepy. And this is the struggle web I talked about on the national wake up call. This is mine. So if you're like, I don't know what to post about, um, you know, you've seen like, I think Ashley Smith recently shared like a color wheel, which is just like different things you can post, but these are struggles. You don't always just, just want to share the highlight reel. I try to always include some sort sort of story in every post that I make. And this really helps every single application or message I get from people says, Ashley, I so connect to your story. I feel like I wrote that post myself. You are so in my head and that's definitely what you want to do. So create a struggle web and kind of figure out what you've dealt with, what has shaped you, and then begin every week to look at that and say, am I sharing these different parts of me? Because that's, what's going to draw the right people to you. Not just like, Hey, I'm drinking my shake. Who wants to work out with me? Um, you have to dig deeper. Okay, so that was creating your avatar, finding the right people. So that's super important. But all of that, believing in the coaching opportunity, believing in you, finding the right people, that's okay, but you have to take massive action. So again, here's Grant Cardone. Um, you have to read the 10x rule if you haven't read it already. But I'm going to show you what I do and how I take more action in recruiting in challenge groups, through private invites, public posts, sneak peeks, all that jazz. Okay, so recruiting from challenge groups. So I do everything in my challenge tracker. And on the second week, I will go through the participants. I sort by number of Shakeologies logged and the people who are rocking it and haven't missed, I send them private messages and say, you have been killing it in this group. I love seeing your face. I think you'd make an amazing coach. I know it's only been two weeks, but I would love to give you more info. Have you ever thought about it? So I take my like high performers when they're all jazzed up, they're really in it. And then I give them info on coaching. I invite them. The rest of the people I will ask if they want a discount and then I will say, but if you want to actively coach, that's also an option too. Because I was a challenger and my coach never invited me to the coaching opportunity. And for six months, I stalked her and all of her coach friends. And I kept thinking that I wanted to be a coach, but I thought, you know what? She hasn't asked me about it. Maybe I'm not good enough because she and all of her coach friends are blondes. And I'm like, you know, they're all blonde. They're all really fit. I don't fit that mold. Maybe they don't think she'd think I'd be a good coach. And then finally in December, I was like, Megan, like, can I have some info on coaching? Right. And I always think like, she's lucky that I finally had the balls to like reach out and be like, I want info on coaching. So now I bring it up to all of my challengers, the ones who are really rocking it. I tell them they would make amazing coaches. Everyone else would just plant the seed, but I do offer everyone the discount. I post that image in there and say, if you want to discount, um, you know, comment below. And then I message them and I have like a comparison chart with the prices that I share and say like, here's how much you could be saving. Like that's a bottle of wine every month. Why would you not get this? Um, and then private invites. So people who engage with my posts, um, people who, you know, on social media, I, I really try to target like my ideal coach. And I haven't really done a great job of that this year because this year I've been in such a reaction mode of, of just like dealing with the people who are coming to me, which has been such a blessing. But right now I am really focusing. I told my team this starting today. Um, I'm going to focus on growing my Instagram. So right now I use my Facebook business page exclusively and that's great. I have so many people there, but Instagram, I've really been lacking. So I'm like, all right, Every day, I'm going to send 10 invites, cold invites. I'm going to start building relationships with people, you know, and then I'm going to start inviting my ideal coaches on Instagram right with you. And so I have this little push group going with them because I've kind of like had to get out of that um, habit. And now I'm like, I'm going to get back in it. I'm going to invite these people with you. Like, let's do this. But anyway. Um, so 10 X, whatever you're doing invite wise, if you're sending out 10 a month or 10 a week, you have to do more. It's a numbers game um, before I go to the next slide. So it's definitely a numbers game, right? You, we always say like for every 10 people you talk to, only one will come through. And the same goes for recruiting coaches. I found that for every like 
eight and a half coaches I sign, only one actually does what they say they're going to do. So that's why I'm in a constant state of recruitment, trying to continuously, you know, build my team. So whatever you're doing, you have to do more of. Um, public posts are really where all of my success has come from this year. And I know that's not the norm. So that's why I want to say you have to be sending those private invites until you get to that point where, okay, you can make a public post and have a lot of interest. But that's, that's very rare. So you have to post about coaching at least three times a week. So here's where a lot of people will say, well, I'm only posting about coaching. I'm not sending invites or vice versa. They'll say, well, I'm doing a lot behind the scenes. I'm sending a lot of private invites, but I'm not posting about it. And the first thing I say is what you say privately has to match what you say publicly. Because the first thing someone does when they get an invite from you is they go to your page. And if they don't see you loving the shit out of the coaching opportunity, living life out loud, being so joyous and happy, they're not going to want to do that. They're going to be like, well, what the heck is she even talking about? Like, I see nothing on her page about coaching. And we naturally post about things that we enjoy, that we love. And if you're not posting about this, then that doesn't show that you love it and that it's worth anyone's time. So you have to be posting, you have to be authentically and relentlessly sharing the coaching opportunity publicly as well as privately. So I'm going to share with you some examples. Now these screenshots are from like August, but this was one week of what I posted and I signed up like 16 coaches in this week of posts. So this was a Friday morning. Friday mornings are always a coaching post for me. And I, I talked about like reading books and how I want to read books with my daughter and I can buy her as many books as I want. I asked people for their book recommendations. So I got more engagement and exposure. And then I had a link for them to join my sneak peek group if they wanted to learn about coaching. Later that day, I did a live video and I shared about how when I told my husband I wanted to be a coach, he flipped out. We got into a huge fight. We were really embarrassing. But then I gave them tips on how they can get their spouse on board with whatever it is they want to do, whether it's go to school, have another baby, get another job, start coaching, but there was no call to action for actually joining me. This was the next morning. I said, I pulled an all nighter, which I actually did. I stayed up all night on a Friday night doing beach body work. Um, and then I said, there was no call to action there, but I just said like how grateful I am for the coaching opportunity. And that I love, you know, this work. Because I want people who are like, okay, I'll, I'll work all night in order to, that was, I, we had booked our flights to London that morning. And that's what I had said. Like I, I stayed up all night, but here we are booking our flights to London. So I want people who are like, okay, if I want to travel, I'm willing to put in that work. Monday mornings are always my best coaching jabs and calls to action because people are at work. They feel fat, they can't find their pants after a weekend of indulging, and they don't want to be at work. So they're scrolling Facebook and they're feeling bad about themselves. And I always hit them with like, my life is so freaking amazing. Like, this is what I get to do. And then they I always have a call to action. Like, if you want to join my sneak peek group, you want to learn more, complete this form, join this link, etc. If you haven't quit your job yet, then say how excited you are to go home that night and connect with women and to work on your other business and your side hustle that Mondays don't feel like Mondays to you. Um, you know, you can always spin it, but Mondays are great days for, for coaching calls to action. This was Monday night. I was speaking on a call. This was a, a Wednesday. I was getting professional photos done and taking care of my daughter at the same time. But I really said how this was a business that allowed me to be with my family. And then I talked about how later, it was after the photo shoot, that my professional headshots were actually family photos. That was very intriguing to people. They're like, oh, that's really cool. This was the next morning, a Thursday morning, and I said how, you know, I get to make my own schedule. I, you know, called my boss and asked her if I have the day off, and she said, heck yeah. And then I said, if you want to learn more about coaching, join this group to learn more. And then this was the next day, and I said, I woke up early, got my work done, now we're going swimming, now I need your advice, do you think she's too young to go to an amusement park? So they, there was lots of engagement, lots of sharing, lots of talking, and then lots of people who joined that sneak peek group to learn more. And then I actually did another video later that day, but I didn't take a screenshot of it. So that's how many times I posted about coaching in one week. And actually right now I'm trying to post more than that um, to really 
amp things up because I keep thinking of this time three years ago was when I decided I was going to ask my coach about coaching and I was thinking of okay the new year how am I going to change things what am I going to do differently so right now that's when a lot of people are kind of thinking ahead so you want to scoop those people up and let them know what coaching can do for them so all year I have been running weekly sneak peek groups which have been so time consuming but very very successful so they have been done in Facebook each week I created a separate Facebook group, a whole new group, and I went in there and did live videos. So on Monday I would do an overview of what coaching was. I would just say it's about three things. It's about living your best life, sharing it on social media, and then helping other people live their best lives. Talked about Beachbody on Demand, talked about Shakeology, talked about these containers, which I don't even ever have in the kitchen. They're always in my office because I'm always doing videos about them. Um, and then I would say, I'm looking for women who want to be six-figure earners, who are hard workers. I think getting the right coaches starts in these groups. And yes, that weeds people out and scares people away, but that's fine. I'd rather have the people who are committed and who are like, yeah, I want to do this. On Tuesday morning, I always talk about the worries, the fears, and the misconceptions. And they are, I still have them written down. I'm not an expert, not, I'm not a health or fitness expert, I'm not at my goal weight, or I'm already at my goal weight. I don't have a transformation. Number three is I don't have a large network or I live in a small town and nobody here would want to be interested in this. Number four is I'm shy. Number five is I don't want to be in sales. Number six is I'm worried about what other people will think of me if I do this. Number seven is I don't have time. And number eight is I'm not that interesting because I sell this as a lifestyle coaching gig, not health and fitness, because I feel like health and fitness is more intimidating. And we do share more than just health and fitness. I know I do. So I say this is a lifestyle coaching gig focused. It's rooted in health and fitness, but you will be sharing about other passions that you've had in your life. Um, so those are the eight worries, fears, and misconceptions I address in that video. Then later that day, I come on, I talk about the money and give the income disclaimer. I talk about how we earn money and then what they have to pay. And then the next day I talk about spouse support, how I got my spouse on board. Cause the number one thing is my, my husband's not on board. Okay. Well, are you just going to like let him dictate your life for the rest of your life? Or are you going to put on your big girl panties and just do it? Um, the training and the mentor that I provide. So I talk about my new coach Academy, our team page, our team calls, all that good stuff. And then the next step. So I have an application and I'll say the application is in the comments below completed. If you're ready to do this, we'll get you signed up. We'll put you into a challenge group. We'll put you into our team page, all that good stuff. Um, and I bring so much energy and passion to those. So I would read personal development or listen to personal development before I went in these groups and did live videos because I wanted to be so excited, right? I wanted that energy to really just come through and people to be like, I have to do whatever she's doing right now. So if you go on a live video and you're boring, nobody's gonna wanna do it. So I would be so amped up. My daughter would interrupt me like every single video. She would like cause an issue. And that was very relatable and people really like that. So you kind of just have to know your market. But at the beginning, I was like, I have to have it quiet and perfect. I would wait till my husband came home and be like, Sean, like you have to watch her while I do this video. And I would be like, perfect. And those didn't go as well. So then when I just decided to be like, okay, I'm going to do this. And my daughter would be like knocking shit off my desk as I was doing the video. People like were like, okay, I can do this. Like I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have a nanny or anything like that. Um, after those groups were over, I would follow up with everyone who joined. Um, I would go back any new coaches who joined, they would get a new coach announcement in that group so that everybody else would be like, Oh, look, people are actually joining and they're actually successful because I would post their Emerald announcements and their success starter announcements in there. So anyone else who was in that group, they were getting those notifications a week later, two weeks later, like, Oh, so-and-so with Emerald, like I need to do this. Like clearly people are doing this and it's working. But lately, because people are busy right now, they don't have time to be, you know, in three-day groups. So right now, what I did was I took all of that information that I would have in four videos, and I recorded one video. It's 57 minutes long, but I don't care, because if you're willing to watch a 57-minute video, then you're my kind of person. Um, so now, I have an application, and lately, what I've been saying is instead of join my sneak peek group here, I say, if you want more info on this, just complete this application and I'll email you a video to watch. So then I have their email, which is I think way more 
official because now I add them to my weekly email newsletter that I send out and I can follow up with them better because I think I am I don't track. I'm terrible at tracking. I'm not organized. So I, I need emails to just be able to go back through them because I don't follow up with anybody in Facebook Messenger. I'm a hot mess there. But anyway, um, but I did create a Facebook group that will last for the next few months. So anybody, when they fill out that application, they get an email from me that has the video and then it also has a link to join a Facebook group. And in that Facebook group, I created albums with um, our team pictures from like the retreats, summit, uh, success club trips and other albums with transformations, income information. So they can join the Facebook group just to get more information. That's all in there. Um, and that has been successful. I've only been doing that for like a week. And so far I've had like five coaches sign up through just that like one hour video. And they're like really good coaches, like uh, good ones. I, I can tell, you know, you can tell. So I'm like, okay, I think this is working, but I don't know, maybe in January I'll switch it back to the, the, the weekly groups. I don't know, but I'm always tweaking things, but that's what has been working for me all year. And then right now, but I have one more thing for you. If I could change the slide. Okay. A coach apprenticeship. This has been really, really, really successful. I've only done two of these so far, but what I've done is my success partner, Holly and I partnered up and we decided what if we give people like a free, a, you know how you do free groups, like a free group, but for coaching. So we went back through every single one of our sneak peek groups all year. And we said, okay, we're going to run this free apprenticeship group. You will sign up for the free trial of Beachbody on demand. You'll be in a group with us and every day we'll give you coach training. So how we did it was it was on, we did this one on Facebook. Um, in the morning they would have like a challenge group post, right? I would post in there about like, you know, fitness. I also created a calendar for them with my favorite workouts from all the different programs. So we didn't do like clean week. Like one day was 21 day fix. One day was Sean week. One day was T25. One day was Pio. One day was quarter four. So they got to try, you know, all the best programs and we all followed the calendar together. And then in the morning they would do their workout, post their sweaty selfie. And, you know, we would, you know, support each other in there. In the afternoon, Holly and I would take turns each day going live and talking about a different coaching activity. So day one was um, posting something on social media about your day, sharing your sweaty selfie or a recipe or something that you're doing. And then each day it built upon the previous day. So day two was adding five friends. Day three was reaching out to people who have commented on their posts all week. Day four was messaging new people. Day five was personal development. Day six, I don't remember what it was. The final day was they had to do a live video on their page and say like, thanks so much for supporting me this whole week. I'm now going to become a coach. And if you are looking to kind of join me, I would love to help you on your journey. Um, the art coaches had so much success with this because that week there was no pressure right? They weren't officially coaches. They were just testing it out. They were posting on social media without the pressure of getting success club, of making sales, of, you know, hitting Emerald. It was just fun in that first week and they loved it. And people were supporting them because they weren't coming off as salesy. They were just documenting their journey. And then they were like, I have to continue with this. I love this. Like they had so much support and they got a taste for it. And then most of them converted and signed up as coaches. All of those people had previously gone through a sneak peek group though. So they knew everything about coaching. They knew what it cost to sign up. They knew about the worries, the fears, and misconceptions. We didn't cover that in that week. They had already knew that information and then they tested it out and the conversion rate, it has been crazy. So we did it in September. We did it in October. We took November off and we're doing again in December right after Christmas because I feel like people will be like, okay, I'm ready to do something. And this will be like a great segue to get new coaches signed up in, on January 1st. Um, so that has been super successful if you want to try that. So my call to action, you have to believe in the coaching opportunity. Look at the people who've gone before you. If you're like, I have no success to believe in this, just trust it. Just trust. Look at the people who have been successful. You can be there too. Believe in yourself. Step outside your comfort zone. Um, develop your avatar and your struggle web. Post about coaching at least three times a week. Aim for five, better yet seven times a week. You cannot overshare it. Um, 
and just take more action. That's, that's what it comes down to. So that's all I have for you. And I didn't look at the chat yet, but I can. So Carolyn, are there questions? Um, I'm skimming through them now. Um, the names of the books, but Christy answered that one for her. I think we're good with questions, unless anyone has a question they want to ask. But before uh, we do that, just in case you have to go, I wanted to thank you for all of that information that you've shared and taking time out to come talk to us tonight. We really, we really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask while she's on here. And if not, um, I might have one. So. <laughs> Sounds like someone's trying to talk. No? Hmm. I, normally I have see Christy bo bought both books, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> I have, and then the 10X Rule. So the three books by Grant Cardone, I read the 10X Rule first. I've listened to that about six times now. Anytime at nighttime I'm up sending invites, I put my earbuds in and I just listen to him because he just gets you so fired up. And then, um, be obsessed or be average. And now I'm listening to seller be sold. And what's really funny is that he talks about how he like has, he gives you a schedule to how to be like a million dollar earner. He says he wakes up, you know, would wake up at 6am and what he did. And then yesterday I was listening to his book and he said, you know, right now I'm waking up at 4am because I'm trying to learn about global markets. And, uh, you know, there's all these things I need to learn. And I'm like, if he's waking up at 4am him, like he has millions of dollars and so many businesses and so many teams, he's waking up at 4am to work. Why the hell am I not working, waking up at 4am? So it's just like that little, like, you know, it, he really lights a fire under you. Yeah, I actually have the 10x rule on uh, Audible and I haven't listened to it yet. So maybe I will do that. <laughs> His accent gets on my nerves. <laughs> he like says words really funny, but get o just get over that part. <laughs> I have a quick question. Yeah. Okay. So this is something that I should, I've been in and out doing it a, on and off, but the one thing that I'm having the hardest trouble figuring out is my avatar. Like I'm a teacher too. I know Carolyn from college, but that's the only thing that I can really think of that would be me ish. I know there's a lot more. It's just narrowing it down and finding, do you have any tips or hints? Yeah. So first of all, look like go through your house and make a list of all like the brands that you use. Like what things do you buy? What do you spend your money on? You know, there are people who will spend money on expensive peanut butter and there are people who won't like, you know, that's like a differentiator. So like that yeah. kind of stuff. Do you spend your money on like Apple products or Samsung products? Do you have like preferences there? What is your, what was your past like? What was your family growing up? Like, how did that shape you in some way? So like for me, I was raised by my grandparents. My parents both struggle with addiction. So that's something I talk about a lot. But like my husband came from like the perfect family. So that's something he could talk about a lot. It was like coming from this, you know, like, you know, ideal family. So you have to look at, okay, what are your, what? So first of all, if you look at my avatar, I have like, okay, who am I looking for? It's like their age range, their education level, um, if they're married or not, and then their history. So what was their upbringing like? And then what kind of, um, characteristics do they have like so for me I want bossy people like I'm a red gem a ruby gem and I want other like bossy people like me and people always will say be like you come off as rude and mean but I'm not I'm not trying to be rude and mean but I want those people um so you have to kind of think of that like who do you want on your team you're obviously not going to get all those people but if you really start to like, talk to those people the I found like when I make more when I make a coaching post that's a little more edgy then I get the right people when I'm just like, Oh, this is so amazing and wonderful. Like I don't get my people to so kind of have to just figure out like, what is your attitude and how has your past shaped you? And then really just speak to those people. Does that help you at all? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you. And I always talked about how teachers would make such great coaches. <laughs> okay. Which they do. So I wrote blog posts about that. I would always do like live videos about that. I would really try to target teachers at the beginning. I still get a lot of teachers. Okay. Right. 
Any other questions? No. I did want to comment on the beginning part, how you were talking about the recruiting mindset, like instead of thinking of it as a bad thing like oh this is i'm just trying to like add people you're really it is an honor like i don't invite everybody i'm very picky with who i invite like if i talk to somebody and i don't like them i'm not going to invite them to be on the team so just kind of shifting your mindset I, i've done that before i'm like yeah i actually don't think that this is going to work out um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but yeah. it's true because you have this team culture and you really want to uphold that team culture. And I'm sure that, you know, you've had coaches on your team that you're like, oh, it's not worth the two successful points. Like this person is not worth it. So definitely like the mindset that you had around that as far as like, it is a good thing. You're, you're really specifically looking for those people that you like, the people that you want to work with, the people that um you want to hang out with and go grab lunch with and stuff like that and we always say on our team if you can't share a bed with that person then don't invite them so <laughs> i like that you um you talked about the mindset piece first because i think that's like really the bigger the bigger issue as far as like whether or not you're recruiting coaches is whether or not you believe that you know you can so i'm happy mm -hmm. that you touched on that um going through my notes really quick. Does anyone have any other questions for Ashley? Does anyone have anything that they're going to start maybe implementing from this call? I hope so. <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions or maybe if you think of your question and the call has already ended, you could always just ask me and I will ask you if that's okay. And then I will send her answer over to you. But thank you for taking time out of your night to be here with us. And we really, really appreciate it. It's been an awesome call. I'm sure that everyone has lots of notes. Alicia said she has five pages of notes. So, <laughs> so that means that she got a lot out of it. And I'm sure everybody else did too. Um, so thank you again. And I see you have girl code back there. I'm actually reading that right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you soon. Hopefully we'll do another mastermind call. Yeah. Thanks ladies. Here. Bye. Bye. Thank you.